again just very quickly hi hi everyone welcome welcome we are just doing our usual sound check if you're just joining us um if you're watching the replay you know to skip ahead oh i can see us on facebook that's always good um and then jamie if you can just give me a little hi hi so hi. we can see Replay, you know to skip ahead. Let's Ooh, see. I can see us on Facebook. That's always good. Um, and then, Jamie, if you okay. can just give I can me a little you. hi, hi. So we can see. Oh, perfect. All right. So we are all set. So hi, everyone, and welcome to the Savvy Business Show. I am so excited and delighted to have Jamie Palmer with us today, who is the founder and creator, sorry, the founder and creative director of Outlier Marketing Group. And Jamie, I'm going to throw it back to you to just tell us a little bit more about how you got here um, and just your story and just give us all the juicy bits that um, a formal bio can't really give us. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Um, so I'm Jamie Palmer. Um, I run a company called Outlier Marketing Group where we work with driven entrepreneurs to help them really build their online business ecosystems and online business empires. And um, I started this business in college <laughs> probably uh, 15 years ago. Um, yeah, 15 years ago. So September marked our 15th year in business. And Amazing. Yeah, yeah. So um, I started in college. It was originally a website design company because back then, like, social media wasn't, like, it was just kind of coming out. Like, Facebook was this new thing and it was only for college students and then over the years we added in other creative agency type services and today we really we support um driven entrepreneurs offering them done for you services and then we also have programs where we teach everyone all of the things that we offer for our our done for you clients and it's been a crazy journey i mean um it, it's been really really wild i mean we've had um, I was fortunate enough when I first started my business, like it was, it, it, we very quickly got to like six figures, but I stayed there. I stayed there for like a decade. <laughs> yeah. And, and but I like this, I'm going to interrupt you just very quickly because I'm just so impressed that you right out of college knew what you did, wanted to do and that you're still on that path. Cause I think that is so unheard of today. And I always, when I meet like people like yourself or even college kids these days that just, they have their stuff together. To me, that is just so impressive that you even had that vision. Um, and I think what you're about to say next is like how, and we're going to get into that in a second, like you, and actually let me ask you that question because I think we were in any case going there is so Jamie had stood at had been at the six figure thing for a while and then in the last couple of years she had tremendous success and tell us a little bit about, uh, more about that and how you managed to break from kind of this this level that you were at this comfort zone if we can call it that to this yeah. new level of success yeah, it was definitely a comfort zone. I got really good at just um, managing. Like, so from a from a client perspective, we would just always have like eighteen social media clients, and I just got really really good at managing that. And then I had um, after my first son was born, so I have two little boys, a five year old and a um, twenty month old. Um, <laughs> after my first son was born, I was like, oh man, I really need to learn to delegate, right? So. I started to um, bring on an assistant or a social media coordinator or an intern, and then they would support me in helping doing that. And I started to see the potential. And then I, um, after my second son was born, that was a really kind of crazy, scary situation where um, I had to have an emergency C-section and all this kind of like oh my craziness. Gosh, sorry. Of, yeah, no, it's okay. I had had like this plan in place. Because I'm a planner, like many of us are, I'm sure. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to have a natural birth. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to take two months off. And it did not go like that at all. <laughs> he was born a month early. I had an emergency C-section. Like, I worked out until the day that he was born. And 
after he was born, I was like literally stuck in bed for six weeks. And it was, it was in those six weeks that I was like, I am going to do everything in my power to make the biggest impact that I possibly can. And it was at that time where I just said, I'm going to double down on my strengths and anything that is not a strength, I'm either going to delegate, I'm going to say no to, or I am going to create a system around that. And that's really where we had that explosive growth because I think one thing I know for me for that those first 10 years I was really um I did a horrible job at working on my own business like I was killing it like we made millions of dollars for the companies that we were working with but I spent zero time working on my own business Mm. and because of what happened with my son I made a very intentional shift that I was going to treat my own business like my very best client and that's kind of how we've grown so quickly i love that treat your own business like your very best client that is so important and i see a lot of my clients struggle with this this is what i help my clients to do is this that like you know they're white knuckling their business they're so doing everything and then letting go and and making that time to really think and do some business development and some brainstorming and working on your business is what i like to call it versus in your business, right? So important. And it's so amazing to see that by doing that, Jamie was able to to just have all this amazing success. It's just so important to work like a CEO in your business versus that workhorse, right? Um, So switching gears here just a little bit, actually, now your your big thing was like, okay, this this traumatic experience just happened in your business or with your in your family life, I should say, in your personal life. And that was kind of the trigger that made you realize that you have to do things differently. But what was some of your um, mindset like? issues or things that you ran into that was really that you had to break through like what was that like yeah. that road because great question, great question. Yeah. Um, I was buying into my excuses to be completely mm. honest like I didn't have the time or I would do it when my kids got older or like you know I just can't I can't figure I can't do that right now because like I was the queen of excuses and I share this very openly because like I've had, I've brought it to life now, but back then I had had this idea for nearly five years about like launching this course and all this sort of stuff. And I look back and I'm like, man, if I had launched that, like, you know, eight years ago now, cause that's roughly what it was. I would have been like one of the first people who had made a course on this stuff. And Um, I sometimes kick myself, but I feel like the process that I've gone through and all the learning that I've done as a result of that actually makes me a better educator and a better, better, you know, strategist today. And I think the biggest thing for me, I don't think that you need a traumatic experience to have, (laughs) to get your butt in gear. I think for me, I really, um, I love to learn and I really kind of, didn't I was fighting that urge every day in my own business to really keep learning like I was learning like new marketing techniques and all that sort of stuff but I wasn't myself like my business was growing but me personally Mm. as a CEO and entrepreneur I stopped doing that Mm. um and and partially because like I went back to school in 2010 and I got a master's degree in leadership and I'm like I know how to lead people I know blah 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 and I was kind of like I don't want to say I was a know-it-all because I I wasn't but I was not nurturing that side of myself to really work through those mindset pieces that I needed to get to the next level and I kind of let that keep I bought into my excuses and I hadn't made that choice like now is my time Mm. Mm, so important, right? I think Denise Duffield Thomas has to say, it's my time now and I'm ready for the next step. It's one of her quotes. So I just love what you said there because I know that that is what I help my, you know, my, many of my clients. This is the thing, like they all have that plan for one day when, then they'll do it and then they buy into their excuses. But then I think what was really important here, which I just want to highlight 
there is if you are an entrepreneur, you are naturally wired for self-improvement because <laughs> there's no ways that you can grow a business and disrupt markets if you are not invested in becoming the best version of yourself. And it's just amazing to see that Jamie acknowledged that in herself. And I think that masters in leadership probably helped her to do that. And yeah. then she, she started feeding herself what she needed um, and worked on herself, I'm going to say. And as a result, your business also expands. It's just sort of, it's impossible for you to not grow in your business if you're doing a lot of personal growth on yourself too. So that's yeah. really wonderful it's to see. Over. It's totally spills over and it spills over by accident. And I think, you know, the thing for me is, um, and I say this all the time is that I think even with a lot of the clients that I work with, like everybody loves the planning, right? Like everybody loves the planning, oh. but really that satisfaction that you're looking for and that excitement and that momentum comes in taking action and implementing yes. and being really consistent and getting that feedback. And so for me, that was like one of the biggest things that we did. I was like, I'm just going to show up consistently. Yeah. Right? Like, Every day I'm going to do social media and every day I'm going to do face, you know, every week I'm going to do Facebook lives. I'm going to make all these commitments. And really that was like the turning point for me. Like I treated my business like my best client and I showed up uber consistently and I took action and I've always been obsessed with taking action. Like that's just who I am, but I was always taking action for my clients and not for myself. And yes. That shift that we made oh my goodness and I love what you just said there because again this didn't happen overnight this is something that you are going to grow into and yeah consistency guys like when I was at the blogger conference so um a little while ago that was the one thing that everybody was saying and how none of us do enough consistent work like or in the beginning at least people are like I'm going to do this no I'm not going to do that I'm going to do this no I'm not going to do that that. Um, but if, as we can see, 15 years of consistent action and getting even more consistent and then doing that personal development work on herself, Jamie has now gotten this amazing, successful business. Now, I want to kind of switch gears here and ask, what is the most commonly experienced challenge that you see um, your clients have with marketing in general? Yeah, so it's there's two there's two things that I see that often happens is people don't have a really keen understanding of their ideal client and where they are in that client journey and many times what I often see happen is people will market themselves to the problem that their business solves for clients but we know this <laughs> sometimes the problem that you solve for your clients is not the one that they're aware of that they have. So I think people often don't do enough research in asking clients that they do love more about them and really like being hyper specific. Like my ideal client is this person that's into this, that shops at this place, that these are their behaviors. This is where they're at in their journey. This is what they're happy about. This is what they're sad about. This is what they feel pain about. And so I think that that's a big thing that often gets missed because it, 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 what happens is it gets very generalized, right? Instead of focusing on one person hyper specifically. And I think that's one big mistake. And I think the, or challenge, I would say, right? That's not a mistake. It's a challenge. And so when people bring things to market, their content doesn't always resonate because it's not geared towards the right ideal client or it is, but the way that they're marketing it, it, it's not connecting because they're not addressing the problem that the person knows that they have. And then the other challenge is obviously consistency. <laughs> consistency is a huge challenge in marketing because um, people will be like, Oh, well I've been doing this for 30 days and I haven't gotten any results. And it's like, 30 days isn't being consistent. Talk to me in six months if you haven't gotten results. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's so important what you just said there because I think people think that they can do something for 30 days and then if it doesn't work, then they give up. Um, and if you guys are hearing the background noise right now, the trash guys just arrived. So excuse the noise in the background. But 
Um, I think that's so important to remember that. And what you had said there about we want to sell, like, solve people's problems, and I think that's kind of rookie mistake 101 when we first learn marketing. It's like, but what is the problem that you're solving? And sometimes when you speak so much about the problem, you're not actually selling them the solution. And so you sometimes can attract really problem people because they, they are the ones that are so deep into the problem versus seeing beyond that and into the solution. So I love that you just also brought that up about that you really want to make sure that you know your ideal client and also the transformation that you're selling to them. Yeah. Well, and I think too, like for me, many of us, I mean, or many of the clients that I work with, you know, a lot of the people that are attracted to me are just not as far along in, in, in the journey. Like they're on a similar path. So you have to think about, you know, if that is your ideal client and your avatar, like when you're at this space, like what were those, those emotions that you were experiencing? Right. So if I'm like, Hey, let's go do Facebook ads. And you're like, I just can't even imagine taking on one more thing. You're not even going to want to hear nope. about, like, you're not even open to that. And so I think that's like really understanding that journey and the evolution that happens in the more specificity that you can get around that journey, the easier it's going to be to market to your ideal client. Mm, and like, if you have problems with this, go to Jamie because she's going to help you <laughs> to really map that out. Um, and I think this is also something that takes time. Like this is for yourself, even for defining your own language around it, what your customers resonating with. And it's again, it isn't something that you wake up tomorrow and you do it perfect. Like if you're doing this by yourself, even, but even I feel like marketing agencies taste a lot before they go, okay, this is definitely the thing that is working, right? Right. Well, and I think too, I, it's super important to remember that you, a, a business is an ecosystem. Like a business is a living, breathing thing. My ideal client five years ago is way different than my ideal client today. And so as you grow and evolve and your company grows and evolves and you change as a CEO, that's going to change and evolve too. Not to say that it's going to be radically different, but I think the thing is you also have to you have to get consistent, right? And you have to look at the data and you have to look and see what is resonating. Like I'm working with um, a wedding photographer who coaches people and she did all of these Facebook lives about like how to perfect the, um, the perfect wedding day timeline and all of this sort of stuff. And then she did some around like being more productive as, as a wedding photographer all the stuff around the productivity and the business side resonated so much more with her ideal client than the stuff around how to do the perfect timeline for your wedding day. And so I think people, and we talked about this, people love to plan and you can, you can iterate and you can sit in creation mode, but you have to actually start to put yourself out there to see what's going to stick, right? Yes. And, take and action. Then, <laughs> yeah, you got to take the action. You got to implement, you got to execute. And once you start to do those things, then you can look at the data and make smart decisions around what's resonating and continue to tweak and hone that marketing message. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so this was the question that I was going to ask, but we're kind of answering it now just as we speak. You do not have to reinvent the wheel. Like, you just have to tweak it. I think that was like the biggest mistake when I started in business was if it didn't work quickly enough, I wanted to come up with something completely brand new versus just <laughs> tweak what was there and make that better. And so it's so important what you just said there. Follow the data, guys. The, it is important for you to know your numbers and to see what people are clicking on. What are they interacting with? What are they resonating with? Um, and if that's not your jam, again, hire someone, outsource, become that savvy CEO. If marketing is not your thing, if you're not interested in it, then give it over to someone else that can manage you. You can still write for them and all of that, but they will be able to come to you with all of those ideas. And again, hint, hint, Jamie does this <laughs> stuff. <laughs> so what is your number one tip for someone who feels overwhelmed by social media? Um, I would say give yourself permission to take a break 
<laughs> um, and create a system for um, streamlining your social media. So one of the things that we often recommend for all of our clients is committing to weekly Facebook Lives. And what we recommend is you commit to those weekly Facebook Lives, and, and that is the basis for all of the other micro content that you're going to create. So and if you're not a big fan of video, that's okay. If, if you want to write a long-form blog, that works too. But ultimately, um, I would say give yourself permission to take a break for a week and to really kind of like – Block a few hours to think about what is the content that you want to create and then lean into, you know, that longer form content because from that longer form content, you can make lots of shorter form or I call micro content for social media and you use that, you know, you can go take a Facebook, a 10 minute Facebook live. If you go and get that transcribed, that's roughly five to eight pages written out of content. Well, let's be honest, that's plenty of social media for the next two weeks. And so we always recommend like grabbing those those tidbits and those nuggets and then plugging that in from there. So your focus as the CEO of your business is only focusing on that long form content. And then you can delegate or hire a VA or hire you know an assistant to pull all of that stuff from there. And then there's never a worry around is this in my voice? Because you literally said it. <laughs> mm -hmm, exactly. And I think that's so important to remember here again, too, is like you do not have to say new things every day. You can repurpose your content all over the place all the time because trust me, people are still coming to me and go, what, you do business coaching? I'm like, where have you been, buddy? Right? So you can, you can really like say your message over and over and over again. Get it in as many different ways as you can say it because people aren't p always picking up the first time. Someone might not have been on social media that day. Um, so it's so important to really remember like that you can repurpose everything that you do. And again, if uh, coming from the savvy CEO side of things, delegate what doesn't feel right or like a good use of your time. And then being able to focus and to stay consistent. That's so important. That's a savvy CEO right there. Now, you have this course, and I love the name of the course. So as we know, um, Jamie's uh, company is called Outlier Marketing Group. And when we use the acronym for that, it is OMG. And so she has a podcast called OMG, and now she has OMG Content Workflow, which is a course. And who is this course for? What are we going to learn if you, you know, who is this for? What are we going to learn? What happens in there? Yeah, Tell so us this more. course is for um, entrepreneurs who are generally they they're they're doing pretty well in their business and they know that they need to to, to take that shift and really start to show up consistently on social media. They know that they can get clients there, but they're not showing up in the way that they need to. And so what this course does is it's our system that we use with all of our done for you clients, where we show you how to make those Facebook lives how to make those buckets of content and, and, and turn that Facebook Live into micro content. It gives you all the systems, all the blueprints, all the processes. And then we also walk you through in this how we consistently come up with topics for Facebook Lives and podcasts. Because I do my podcast Monday through Friday. It's 15 minutes long, right? And everyone's always like, Jimmy, how do you come up with that much, <laughs> that many ideas for your content? And literally this process that we create or I've created is is so streamlined and so awesome and it's really for people who A are ready to bring on a VA or ha have a way to delegate they want to delegate their social media but they want it to be in their voice and this system does just that. Oh, that's amazing. That sounds wonderful. And where can we find it if people wanted to go and look it up? Where can we find that? Yeah, so it's O M G Social Made Simple. Oh, I love that. Love that. Okay. And we'll put that in the show notes as well for you guys. Um, so Jamie, any final thoughts, something that we didn't say that you wanted to say before we wrap it up? Yeah, just, just take action. I mean, I am, I think I'm a great example of somebody who waited a really long time to take action for no apparent reason. <laughs> 
Um, but but if you you know if you want to make an impact in the world and you want to bring your business to life and you really want to you know get to that seven figure mark or that eight figure mark or whatever the number is that you want to hit in your business in terms of goals, start taking action and lean into that fear because fear is a great compass for helping you to move forward. Exactly, exactly. And then I'll add to that if you're having trouble and you're bumping up against a whole bunch of things that are keeping you stagnant, don't be afraid to ask for help. Either, you know, joining a mastermind or getting a coach or um, maybe you have a business bestie that can really help you and just push you forward. Really reaching out is the best thing that you can do for your business and help to, you know, get that support that you need. And it's also part of becoming a savvy CEO is like really asking for help when you need it. There's no shame in that. So, Jamie, thank you so, so much for being here today, for coming and sharing your wisdom and your knowledge with us. Um, I look forward to staying in touch. And if anybody has any questions, remember to ask us on this Facebook Live. And we will catch you next time on the Savvy Business Show.